please stop worshiping couples, where an insecure man tries to knock his wife down a peg. I'm really sorry to do this to y'all. Some of y'all are so mad at me about the Ryan Reynolds things, and that's fine. Just don't be a jerk or I'll block you. This is another couple. Please stop worshiping this couple. This couple is not couples goal. And if, you, if you've been following me for a while, and especially if you've been following Cecilia, who I'm going to tag, or any of my mutuals I'm going to tag, this is a lesson. Don't, you don't want this. Now, before I go into why this couple is not what you want, a little refresher on this guy. His most recent ridiculous thing, I think it was just yesterday. So he had Jonathan Van Ness, you know, from Queer Eye on his dumb podcast. He broke down crying because the, Dax was acting like a boomer dad. Okay, now before I go into anything else, I don't know Dax. I don't know Kristen. I don't know any of these people. I don't care about them. And um, they are loaded. Okay. They have so much, they have more money than God and they have so much power and influence. So I'm not attacking them personally, but rather their branding and what they're selling us. I don't like what they're selling us. I don't like that we worship. We have these parasocial relationships with these people and these couples. I don't like it when y'all idolize me or my husband, but I know it's kind of part of, but these people have a ton of money and they're selling us something and it's not good. And all Dax and Kristen, all their friends are white. Okay. I mean, this picture says it all. This relatable couple, this down to earth couple who just, who's just like us, they are nothing like us, y'all. And I don't care if they camp out in a freaking airport on the ground. They spent like $600 worth of stupid sheets and pillows to camp in an airport so they could be relatable. They're not relatable. They're not relatable. They are not us. Even though they may not come from money, that doesn't mean they are us. This man has a very problematic past and he has done nothing but glow up since dating Chris, a, like a Disney princess. She is how he rebranded himself. He was a very problematic man, and now he's taken seriously because he's a dad and married to a freaking princess. But he go, he go, he's a reformed bad boy, which I'm not buying. Of all the things that Dax could have talked about, apparently he wouldn't let go of, you know, teenagers who are trans and gender-affirming care and stuff like that. And apparently Jonathan says, I feel like I'm talking to my dad. And they basically argue back and forth. And, you know, any, any woman who follows me, I know you can relate to this. The devil's advocate. How many misogynistic men who choose to be obtuse, who are literally like exhaust you, making you explain why your life matters, why your brain matters, why your soul matters, that you're human. How many men exhaust you, making you prove that you're human? That's what Dax is doing right here. And Jonathan was not having it. Or, I mean, he kept trying to like make this man see trans people as humans deserve it and and he just kept uh, i mean even the way dax was talking about it was literally spreading misinformation by giving it, it any validity i don't know anyway apparently jonathan broke down crying and you know dax and i don't even know i don't i don't ever listen to this podcast for a reason i don't want to hear this man talk so i'm literally recapping what was reported but monica and dax apologize. the damage is done though you have your guest breaking down in tears and I'm sorry, but anyone who is homophobic, transphobic, any of that stuff, they are misogynistic. These two are tied together, okay? That's why I do not allow turfs on my page or swerfs. It's all tied together. You're policing women, policing people's gender, policing the LGBTQ community. You're not a safe person. And it is rooted in misogyny, usually, which is, or, and white supremacy, capitalism, and all this other crap, right? It's all tied together. So why am I not a fan of this couple? Well, for starters, she asked him to marry her. Now, I, there's, I've watched some interviews on YouTube of both of them being interviewed. And it's so funny because apparently they had a four-year engagement and they were holding off until gay marriage was legal. Guess whose idea that was? Of course it's him. It's not fair. Half our friends are gay. They can't get married. Why should we? Don't believe, do not believe a man when he says that. So as soon as it became legal, she tweets at him and asks him to marry her. Do not be this desperate woman, please. Okay, this isn't just a criticism of him. This is what I believe unhealed codependency looks like. She admitted in this interview, it's this one on YouTube, that it was she was really attracted to his bad boy persona. And that, you know, as women, we just want what we can't have. So it's bad. Speak for yourself. If you've done a lot of the healing and deconstructed patriarchy, you don't want that. <laughs> She was stimulated by that and it drew her to him. Sounds like butterflies. Do, don't be with men who excite you. I'm not saying being with a boring man, but a lot of women who have chronic codependency and unhealed trauma 
are attracted to like men who we find exciting. And what that really means is usually a man from our past who terrorized us, or it doesn't have to be a man. Even if we have mommy issues, they can be played out in um, romantic relationships. And that excitement, that's usually unhealed trauma or, and, or, and or chronic codependency. That is not a good thing. Feeling excited around someone you like, I'm speaking from experience. That's how I almost got unalive. And she even talks about how she likes to give men, people second chances. Do not give men second chances. Like her whole message around this is like that she just is empathetic kind of and believes in him. Despite all of the stuff that she should have been um, concerned about. Like his relationship with Ashton Critcher. Those two are BFFs. And their whole punked thing, which I'm going to get into in a minute. You know what codependency looks like? Finding a man who has lots of red flags and being like that one. I'm going to change him because if I can change him, then I'm valuable. And then that means I'm worth, it's literally Beauty and the Beast over and over and over again. Of course, she's a princess from Disney. <laughs> she then goes on in this, in this interview to talk about how, okay, I'm not going to show screenshots anymore. You can't even, she talks about how he broke up with her. So not only was it a four-year engagement and then she proposed, but he broke up with her in the beginning because he didn't want a relationship. He wanted to date other people. And she was in love with him within a month and a half. That's not love, y'all. That's like limerence, trauma response, nervous system, infatuation. Delusion, that's not love. You cannot love someone in a month and a half. You don't even know them. And she talks about how he was so, you know, even though he broke her heart, he was really gentle and protective of it. Like the whole, the whole way she describes the beginning of their relationship, I'm like, this is couple's goals? He also made her audition for his stupid movie. Like this woman had, she has such a great career. Hit after hit after hit. What has this dude done? First of all, I can't believe he dresses like this. What has he done? He's had like stupid movie after stupid movie. And the only thing that he has is a dumb podcast. All of his fame comes from her. And yet this is couple's goals, right? This, this podcast that he makes Jonathan Van Ness cry on. But he also has said some pretty problematic stuff on, by the way. He seems to really not understand how racism plays into everything. He thinks everything's about class. Okay, you probably don't think patriarchy plays into it too, dude. Like you have two daughters. I'm worried about that. Okay, so he didn't cast her in his movie, this dumb movie. And then she like fought to audition in the bedroom or something for her. She put herself through hair. Hell. This is the name of the article, by the way. <laughs> Don't read it unless you want to be horrified. She even stopped breastfeeding to audition for her husband. Sorry, mosquito. She jokes that she told, she told her kids, sorry, no food today. Daddy's doing a movie. Like, girl, why do you worship this man? You are the prize. If everything, I mean, she... This dude relapsed while they were together. He also got a vasectomy without telling her and then joked about it on a late night show. <laughs> Isn't this funny? My wife thought she was pregnant for like eight hours and I got so scared that I went and literally got surgery. Didn't talk to her about it. <laughs> couples goals. What? Right? Couples goals. Couples goals. Couples goals. You want to see another terrifying interview? Go look th up this one on YouTube. The dude, I seriously, y'all, if you don't follow Cecilia, please do yourself a favor. He wasn't sure if he wanted to be with her. Like this interview, he says so many telling things. How she never dared to say that he, you know, needed to work on things. Like, just had, he just had to realize that he even says, like, I wanted what she had. I wanted to be her, more or less. I was like, this man, seriously, like, was probably ne realized he needed to rebrand himself because he's getting old. And his days of punk, where he goes out and tortures people for jokes. Like anybody who's literally starring on a show where you do pranks on people, which I've told y'all, pranks are never jokes. They're so selfish and they're, they're bullying. Like he was the, him and Ashton, who we know is a terrible, terrible lying predator. That's his buddy. But he talks about how she never challenged him. Oh, and they also talk about how they fought all the time, like screaming matches. Uh, just go, just go watch this interview. And this will give you a one on one what to look for in terms of a man who will marry you for everything you offer him. And so that he can, you know, go up and also bring you down. She's also said stuff like this. Sounds like the man is, um, has low tolerance for her. Just like uh, Ryan Reynolds, he loves to take terrible photos of her. And, you know, just make fun of her. This is not couple's goals, y'all. A man who humiliates you on the regular. To be relatable and to make it normal to hate your wife. It is not normal to hate your wife. They also did this interview with Katie Couric during lockdown and you know talk about how they they hate each other and then he was like annoying her he just got up and left and then was negging her in this interview do you know why this is so relatable they're relatable because so many women are married to men who hate them this is not couple's goal it's not cute and we need to stop normalizing let me know if you want a part two